Oh, hello there. I'm going to talk about over this drawing because this is a time lapse of a self portrait. So I thought making a little bit of commentary would be fitting, even though I haven't done commentary videos like at all, I think, <laughs> in English at least. Anyway. So I drew this picture because I couldn't get a decent photo of my outfit. And it's supposed to be like this fast, easy art that's done in less than an hour, but this one's a little bit more complex and it came out quite nice. So, And I also had footage of it, so I decided to make this video. So the sketch and the line art portion of this uh, video is done in Procreate. As you can probably tell, because Procreate speeds up things in its own particular way, I would say. You can see like me fidgeting with lines and then doing stuff all the time, even though I don't really notice that I do that in real life that much. Anyway, the line art is almost done. Uh, let's jump into Clip Studio. I, I do my fills with uh, this bucket tool on a separate layer, filling it with lasso fill. Nothing particularly interesting here. Again, this was supposed to be the quote-unquote fast art, so because I knew I was going to be working with the patterns, I decided I would put every uh, item of clothing on a separate layer and just overlay the patterns over the uh, item of clothing, so to speak. Uh, even though this wasn't probably the fastest way of doing this, I decided I would make a pattern by hand in Clip Studio. Then again, Clip Studio is not like the go-to program for patterns, I would say, because it doesn't automatically stitch them like Krita, for example, does. But I was away from desktop, so I decided this would do, even though Krita would probably make this process like three times as, pa as fast as it took, because this one, it's not particularly neat. Here you can see I scaled it down and you can already notice the artifacts of the edges of the pattern not really matching, which would not be the problem that I would have with Krita. I just decided to stick with it and fix it by hand because it wouldn't be as noticeable as the pattern is not really intricate as like you would have problems with wallpaper for example. If it had a little bit more elements to its design it would be troubles and I would just go ahead and do it on my PC instead. Back to the tile and I decide that I need a pattern for the jacket as well even though it's just literally stripes and would be easier drawn by hand but at this point, I'm in the pattern headspace and I'm like, yeah, I will do a pattern for everything and I will reuse it later, maybe. Even though this is like the first time that I've used a pattern tool in Clip Studio Paint on iPad. But yeah, here I make a mistake and it doesn't look quite nicely horizontally, so I decide that I don't need it to look horizontally. Which, which is not really a mistake, I just didn't want to redo it again and I just decide to pass it two times instead. So yeah, I'm trying to make it work because I don't want to draw it by hand still. <laughs> you see, it doesn't quite match, and I'm like, uh, maybe I can do something else with it, but no, it still looks kind of bad, so. Uh, here you can see me still trying to make it work, even though I would have probably finished it by hand instead. Yep, doesn't work. Still doesn't work. I'll just redraw it. And then I see that nothing of this works, so I just erase the whole thing and redraw it by hand. I should probably also mention that I was on the phone while I was drawing it, so this whole process of me trying to make a pattern of the lines would probably not take place if I was just not as distracted. Alright, the stripes are done. Not really pretty, but let's stick with it, because I still wanted just to finish, finish it fast. So I'm filling in the blanks of the eyes on a separate layer, because uh, sometimes I want to color skin on the skin layer with like an oily type of uh, brush. I didn't know if I was going to do that here, but just in case, I did eyes on a separate layer, so that it wouldn't smudge when coloring. Uh, here I created a multiplier layer with a clipping mask to the hair and just did a standard cell shading only hair. I wouldn't call this shading though, this isn't like uh, in relation to a light source or anything, it's just like 
shadows to make it a little bit less flat. But anyway, yeah, some highlights on the Add Glow layer. Also clipped to the hair layer. Uh, here I'm doing it with uh, just a round brush, which I'm not really used to because this is the brush I used to block in colors. And later I switched to the lasso tool again, which unsurprisingly makes it a lot faster. Here I make another glow layer for the other parts, not just the hair. Then there's the multiply layer with the pink-ish shadows that I do with a lasso tool because at this point I'm like, yeah, lasso tool is a lot faster. Let's do it with a lasso tool. I wouldn't say it's maybe it's not that fast, but it feels a lot better. So yeah, I'm just sticking to the tool that I like more. The pants I thought were a little bit gaudy with this color scheme and so I, after doing, trying to make it work with the shadows, I decided just to airbrush the thing. I can never tell what to shade black with, so I just do it with the black color and then fade out, as you will see shortly. At this point I still haven't noticed that I forgot to color the belt buckle, even though I'm literally coloring the belt right now. With the brose accessory it's the same, it's just still shading at first and then a subtle reddish gradient at the bottom. I don't really have a plan how to color skin in this case, so I just fiddled with high contrast uh, cell shading at first and then I just blended it out. This is not really the prettiest looking way of doing this. Oh, by the way, I just noticed that I left a highlight of the hair in the shadow of the hair. Okay, that's neat. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm just doing the shadows on the skin at this point. I decided that I needed that eyeshadow as well, even though it was totally fine without it. It's just, since it's a self-portrait, you gotta make it authentic, don't you think? Here comes the generic grey background. So after colouring the background grey, I noticed that the whole body doesn't have like this same pop feeling as the head with the hair does, so I decided I would probably do with some highlights, but they never seemed to work quite as I expected them to, <laughs> because the body is already very high contrast with these white stripes. Well, no, not exactly white, but they are close to white, and this white skin on these almost black colors, so the highlights maybe were a little bit overkill. Oh, here I finally noticed that the belt is not colored. Alright, so this one I don't usually do, but because the colors were so contrasty in this one. Contrasty, is that a word? Anyway, I decided to airbrush it on a separate layer so that the character would seem a bit more whole against the background than it was before. I don't usually do this because I really like black line art against everything, but yeah, this one needed it. It's probably like this because I don't usually reference real life objects and I needed to have a black shirt. And in retrospect, I should have probably just filled it with black, the color of line art, and be done with it. And because this still didn't quite feel completed to me, I decided to also throw a gradient map on it. So that's it, the image is done. I hope you found this video pleasant to watch or in informative at least. So yeah, see ya.